So here we are in Cat. Our topic today is homosexuality. Before we begin, can we hold hands and pray? No. Why? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just chilling here having a good time, and then Sean asked me to hold hands with him. Uh. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so what we just thought we'd read one of the verses in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. It's very clear in the, New, in the Old Testament. Leviticus uh, says... Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It's an abomination. That's what it says. Straight up, clear, no question about it. But for our viewers in Hawaii, Steve is going to read from the Pigeon Bible. The same verse. Here we go. No make sex with one guy, just like you make sex with one wahini. (laughs) As pilau lidat. That means, as pilau lidat, translating over the King James means... That's bad. That's bad. It's bad. <laughs> As we doubly that. So we just learned some pigeon. Getting yeah. back to the serious thing, does the Bible clearly state it's an abomination, detestable, reprehensible, in the other versions, uh, homosexuality? He already read. I already read. You'll well, be the first to speak. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say yes based on what I just heard, but... Every time I answer something that I think is clear, Sean throws something at me. No, so. I'm not throwing anything at you. You All say right. the Bible straight yeah. up teaches that. Yeah. Steve? It does in the Old Testament. Does it in the New Testament? The New Testament teaches it's a sin in 1 Corinthians, I believe. 1 Corinthians. Yeah. Can we read it in the pigeon? <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I turned my phone it off. <laughs> so um, we're three believers. We read the Bible. We trust what it says. It says homosexuality is a sin. Yeah. Where do we go from there? Because we're surrounded by people who say, I was born that way. I'm homosexual. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Where do we go from there? Well, when we're all born sinners and some of us struggle with different things. So Excellent. To pick and choose which sin you're going to throw, take more seriously, I think is a bit hypocritical. So what you're saying then to rephrase is that be, the Bible lists everything that's a sin or a lot of things that are a sin. Yeah. And no one has the right to take them and throw them away just because it happens to be their particular sin. Yeah. We should embrace what it says. It's yeah. a sin. And to, and to take that uh, the other way in terms of the evangelical sense of looking at it or more orthodox view, uh, why are you being so dogmatic about one sin when Christ... About homosexuality. Well, yeah. Uh, when Christ paid for all sin... Number one, and number two, you ought to love everybody. And number three, if they are in sin, the number one place you want them to be is in church, learning how to overcome these things. Can you believe the wisdom in this young man? It's exceptional. Very good argument. Steve, anything to add? Um, didn't we discuss um, what a sin was already, though? Didn't, I think that we sounds did. like a familiar didn't topic. We, didn't we decide that it was a lack of love or a lack of belief right in the christian so, era so where yeah. does this fit where does homosexuality fit into this then if we're saying new testament says it's a sin we we're talking about naming different sins haven't we talked about how we can't even agree what a sin is yeah so yeah i, I think uh, just trying to bring po- it together the point know? is good yeah. because uh everything's a sin christ paid for the sin of the world So why are we talking about specific sins? And then why does Paul talk about it specifically with Corinthians? And does what Paul said to the uh, church at Corinth apply to people today? Right. I would say it does not in the same way. Uh, Yeah, I would agree. Well, not in the same way, but I still think it's a sin in its general application. The the reason I say what I said is because... um, the apostles were over that church. All of the apostolic letters were addressed to the church. Uh-huh. Then, yeah. the church at Ephesus, and then he gives his advice. The church at Corinth, and then he gives his advice. And so, uh, and why was that? Because the apostles, I believe, had to raise up a church, a bride who was pure, without blemish, without spot, Ephesians chapter 5. That was their job. They couldn't divide. They had to be pure. And so when he wrote them letters, I think you're right. He was saying homosexuality, no. And they Mm -hmm. actually had to be pure. And Christ in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, he comes and he says, look, I have this. You're doing good here, but I have this against you. And unless you change, you're gone. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a setup then that is really, really hardcore. It's almost like Old Testament like with the church in that age. 
But following that, when God writes his laws upon the minds and hearts of us, and Christ has already paid for the sins of the world, including homosexuality and all the other sins, I think that we step more to Steve's idea that we don't look at the sin. You know, we look at the person and their faith and their love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, would, uh, I would just say that if, if someone's participating in homosexuality, which I have friends that, that are, it's like, I don't treat you any differently. I don't look at you any differently. That's you. you that's between you and God. And that's the way I view everything. Because it, me as a fellow sinner, I got my own stuff I got to deal with. You have to deal with your sin. You have to talk to and pay to God. You, God's going to judge you. You're going to have to face him one day mm. with that sin. And I'm going to have to do the same thing. So I love you as a brother or sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I ask that you accept Christ's sacrifice and, and all that. And you just carry <coughs> out the, the general meaning of the gospel and not just focus on uh, other sins. And if they want to change, then you help them as a brother in Christ. Mm. Great advice. I tend to lump it in to to the same uh, lump it into the same category as uh, our conversation about transgenderism mm -hmm. usually. So I kind of have the same response to this as that, and it's that your identity is in Christ, not uh, your sexuality. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So uh, would you think maybe that the evangelical response to homosexuality today is more in opposition to their um, pride and they're trying to justify the lifestyle as normative and that that's what evangelicals are pushing against more than the sin itself? Uh, well, that throws gasoline on the fire that's already burning. They've got a pilot light in their back of their mind that's going. It's <laughs> so like in a fireplace. Yeah. And then they, the pride parades just go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and then that's where we're at now. Yeah, where that's where we're at. Out. And plus, they are waiting for the last days, and they think it's signs of the last days anyways. Right. So that's also part of it. Even though man-boy love was very popular with the Greeks, and the Romans practiced it, all mm. of ancient civilizations yeah. openly embraced But that's kind of the point yeah. in the Bible, in context, what it was yeah. talking about anyways, right. in uh, my opinion. And so on that, I think there's a couple different ways you can look at it. Uh, I think, I think uh, American churches are or having a knee-gut reaction to losing control over the culture. Mm. And that gay pride is one of the biggest things that's taking over, let's just say, evangelical churches are going to church on Sunday. And it, it all just shows a secularization in America. So, of course, they're going to attack that because they view that directly in line with atheism. Right. And in terms of the sin, uh, I think, honestly, it's just picking and choosing sins that you want to judge upon in Scripture. Okay, I think we covered that when we covered transgenderism, so we could yeah. pretty much end it now, but I do want to throw something out to you. Okay. In, in harmony with what you've said, both of you have said about sin, about we can't pick and choose, we all have it, we have to deal with it, walk with God. Ravi Zacharias. <laughs> we've, ta we've talked about him several times already. We, talk we have, I, I think I Sean just threw it at us one I threw time. It at we you, talked but about it it's in. right on the, <laughs> oh, the, the hot plate of what's going on in the yeah. world today. For those of you who don't know, and I think I, I've read enough and heard enough now, Ravi Zacharias, he's an astute mind, uh, RZIM ministry worldwide. He's a Christian apologist. He has uh, always represented the faith well with his intellect and his logic. Yeah. He died and uh, people mourned his death until three months later it was discovered that Ravi has been involved with owning massage parlors, receiving massages, sexual engagement, possibly a rape, and the thing that makes me smile is 200 photos of women on his phone. 200? Yeah, all, all, <laughs> see, that's oh. what makes me laugh. That's what all the critics are saying about him. There was 200. What if it was one? Yeah, he would yeah. still be the what same. What if it was twenty thousand? <laughs> what if? He, I mean, does it make him much worse because there's two hundred? I, I, so, and what about picking on him post mortem? Mm -hmm. And why not just say, "Hey, the guy, he was a great apologist. He had a great logical mind. Yeah, it's between him and God. Why are all the pastors, James White, Mike Ringer, uh, Todd Friel?" Uh, all these guys coming forward and doing these hour, Greg Johnson, hour long presentations about how heinous it is what? that Ravi has done this to the faith. Oh, come on. I, I mean, 
It, That's so dumb. It, Isn't it dumb? Yeah, everybody has their own stuff that yeah. they do. He happened yeah. to be high profile, so well, that's he got the thing more right popular. There. And so if, if you are positioned as one of the most popular faith leaders in America, and you speak with great clarity, well, Ravi Zacharias is one of the people I looked up to for a long time and got me into apologetics and all that. So for someone that if someone were to come out of atheism or out of Mormonism or out of whatever it believes, looking up to Ravi, seen as a great intellectual, as a great faithful guy, to hear that is really hurtful and can damage a lot of people. And I'm not saying making hour long presentations about it is wrong. And what Ravi did was certainly wrong. But I say we just look at the great things that he did. We use those and the things that he did bad. It's between him and God, and we say those are wrong. It's right. the same with any intellectual person that yeah. uh, made some great math discovery, scientific discovery, that does, does great things in their field, let's say, and then they find out they were bad in their personal life. Right. That's with almost any, yeah. any no. great mind, you can right. find <laughs> issues with, with their personal stuff. Right. So, I don't so I don't why would it be any... different in the faith? Yeah. Especially for somebody, you say they looked up to him, they may have. Yeah. But they, isn't that our problem for not teaching people to look to don't look up to man? Yeah. Yeah. Ravi Zacharias, who knows what that guy's doing? Why can't we openly say that and to mm -hmm. say, listen to what he teaches, like Jesus said to the Pharisees, listen to what they teach, but don't follow him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why, why don't we see? I think the problem is we put emphasis on following and holding men up. Yeah. We, yeah. we, we, yeah. It's like our idols. Like that's yes. what we did about idols. Um, they're our it's, rock stars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing. And we're looking to the people themselves and thinking they're totally holy. They have a yeah. light, a white light around them at all times. Yes. It's just like, uh, with the Mormon apostles. Yes. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, you can't even talk to them. Right. They're so holy. Yeah. That's a lie. Yeah. And then added to that, what about the people who are posting these criticisms now? How do they have the right to point a finger at Ravi Zacharias post-mortem when they have sin in their life? Sure. Some sort. I don't know what yeah. it is. Porcupine love. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's a painful it's, lifestyle. <laughs> it's a horrible you. one. <laughs> I was addicted to it at one time. <laughs> no, but why do we think we can point the finger of judgment on someone else when we know that in our hearts we are sinners still. Any thoughts on that? Well, I, I was on uh, Instagram the other day, and one of the, I guess, apologists in the Christian community that I'm in uh, on social media, he was posting about how in his book he took out like the, the acknowledgement to Ravi Zacharias and all that, that we need to totally get rid of everything of all of his books and don't share anything about him and all that. And I'm like, hey, that's kind of ridiculous, man. I know I threw away all his books. So <laughs> I don't have a single book. Of I mean, I don't have any of him either, but I used to watch him all the time. And why I, don't you any, why did you stop? I, I just didn't. It was no disagreement with it. I mean, I just move on to watch yeah. other people. Like Frank Turk used to be the only guy I watch and I don't watch him mm. as much anymore. So it's just moving on to different people. So that, what happens if somebody them? has good teachings yeah. and then uh, you find out they're an atheist? Like someone has just good advice about some topic. Right. I don't yeah. know what it, life advice, whatever. You find out they're an atheist. Right. You yeah. still can appreciate what they do. Yeah. yeah. You know, like no a doctor heals you of cancer and they're an atheist. Yeah. Or yeah, whatever, anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. they still healed you of cancer. It's the, the good things can be separated from the bad. They're not. It shouldn't taint the good that we all lump everything do. together. Yeah. The other incongruity I want to bring up about it is um, what was Ravi saved by, according to the evangelicals who love him, loved him before this news came out? He was saved grace by, by grace faith. through faith. Yeah. So if he had, it was a man of faith, which he appears to be, yeah. who had a problem in his flesh, I want to know from his critics, where is he? Yeah. Is he in hell? Or is he in heaven, if they're that, how they believe? Well, if he hit the 200 kid. mark, if he had 199, <laughs> he'd be fine. But that one extra one, that's the hell, hell picture. Gun's like, Ravi, you should have just uh, ha took a picture of one less girl and I would have let yeah, you in. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But, but look, if I was a critic, I would just stay away from that topic. Because Good that, point. that's none of your business. You don't know. Yeah. Only God does. And Ravi right now. And heart of the matter long next week, I'm going to be going after the critics and, and talking about this. This is why I wanted to oh, put Lord. in a shameless plug mm -hmm. and hear from my two young cohorts 
in what they thought about that. And if there's someone that wants to <coughs> bring him up at all, I mean, they can mention like, yeah, he had his own personal struggles, but here's what he said about this. And yeah. I think it's good. You say something like that. You don't have to focus to do an hour show along all the mm-hmm. bad stuff. Yeah, you know? oh my. It's Just, hours. You, I think it's definitely worth mentioning. If you're bringing up something he said, you can say, yeah. because people are probably thinking that if they hear you mention his name, you can say, oh yeah, he had some personal stuff at the end, whatever. But here it is. I still don't understand why we have to mention the personal stuff because everyone has personal stuff in right. the end. That's yeah. true. No pun intended. And yeah, and I mean, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying you, oh, that oh, would be gosh. much better than doing than focusing only on that i mean if someone gives a quick note they're see, not going to note Robbie Zacharias. they're going to get rid of everything he ever taught or said yeah. for the rest of his life well, and he's good. gone down in flames uh not as a flamer but as a <laughs> <laughs> that's the other as we admit, yeah, that's good proper oh, for the Lord. topic <laughs> one final uh, thought all right and i've always thought this mm-hmm. and i think this still if you look at Robbie Zacharias, he has a very scarred face from acne. Yeah. And he probably isn't really considered an attractive man. And uh, especially growing up, I guess, in India. And, and so he probably sequestered himself to study. And he probably had very strained relationships with women of the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. And so when he goes into a place of prominence and power and money, I mean, it's proverbial. Mm-hmm. You yeah. get that, and then when you back it up with a guy who's probably awkward with women to begin with, he, we, I mean, can we have some compassion on the fact that perhaps he was wrongly capitalizing, wrongly, yeah. on that situation, but nevertheless, you know, can we have some mercy and some compassion for him? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Well, we can. I would. I would just like to say because I, I know the commenters are gonna hop on this. We're we're misogynistic or something for saying what you just said. Uh, what? This is not the throw away what Ravi did. Ravi was a hundred percent wrong in in what he did. But we all have struggles in our flesh. I bet you a hundred years from now, once we well, once I see, I'm gonna outlive both of you. But uh. <laughs> I hate you to say that. That wor- makes me worry for you. <laughs> but but once we just look back and see all the faith yes. leaders of uh, of today, a bunch of stuff is going to be coming out about them in the future. So yeah. stop putting your faith in men. Yeah. And just listen to it. a lot of them have great advice, great tactics, convince you of the existence of God and and other things. But don't put your faith in men. Yeah which I think should be a central message of Christians on a pulpit online. Yeah. Do not trust men in religion. Trust God. And don't judge Christians. We are sinners saved by grace through faith. That's yeah. it. Don't hold us up as holy because yeah. we're not freaking holy. Yeah. And I can't stand the, the I, idea that we are. And I don't know Ravi's work that much, but I don't know if he was claiming to be some super holy guy or not. So. But I don't think no. he was. I, I think from what I remember of hear, hearing um, from him, he didn't do that. But there's some that do, yeah. and some people eat it up. Yeah, that's and even have, worse. And then they apply it to everyone, including yeah. him. So yeah. that could be part of the problem as well. Good point. Very good points, both of you. Proud of you on the spot, putting you on the spot, and you both jump and rise to the occasion. That's with our such, whole show. It's, it's, all, on it's the all on the spot. We don't prepare <laughs> at all for this. I prepared a little. One last thing since we mentioned it. Of course, like Ethan said, <laughs> What he did, if, he, if, if the rape charge is accurate, if the molestation charge, if the manipulation charges are all accurate, uh, I mean, absolutely side with the women and the victims. And this is not misogynistic. This is just, stri- I'm just trying to speak from the Christian perspective of how brothers and sisters can hand, handle somebody, even a prominent person, that has these things uh, marked against them. And then one final thing just on it is his, his messages, his written messages to the women of his 200 photos. You sound like you know a lot about this. I, I know. know. Exactly uh, zero I, I knew this. I knew like he did stuff, but I did not bother to They were so it. sappy and unsexual. Now maybe he was grooming people, 
<laughs> they were just like, you're so, I just love your beauty. It's like the sun setting over the ocean. And it's just like, it was like a seventh I mean, grader <laughs> composing a poem. It, it's Ravi Zacharias. So I, I don't know what else he would expect. I know, but message. with men, it's usually like, you know, let's get to it, baby. I love your hot body. It no. It could be so much worse. Yeah. It, it, yeah it was oh, so. Man. It sounds like it, it was almost like him being genuine about yeah. that, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. not brought up in any of the critiques either. No, that's interesting. So we bring him up here on Cat. Yeah. Yep. Whose turn, Rochambeau boys? Uh, it's me. yours. You oh, very it. generous of you not to argue with your elder. No, brother. it is him. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. This is for next week. Here we go. If I have enough faith, will God do what I want? That sounds like something you would rent to Santa Claus. Like. <laughs> so now we've covered the topic. <laughs> no, we're going to talk about this because there's more to it as there usually is next week on cat out, out. out.